another marathon came to the end and I released another course on Udemy called Power Automate for Power Apps Developers. So technically it means that if you are a Power Apps developer, there are cases that you want to integrate your Power App solution with Power Automate. While it's easy, there are triggers. I have quite a few videos that just like four or five minutes, you will get a hold of it on how to call a flow from Power Apps. But if I can give you a few hours of lecture on just how to integrate Power Apps and Power Automate, there should be something different than just use that trigger, make the binding, make that call, get the results, and that's it, done. First of all, this course is not a beginner course. This course is an intermediate to advanced level course. It's not just about how to do this and how to do that. It's about how you can make some technology match a business problem. So basically, it goes all around solutioning and what is the right component and what is the right approach to solve a business problem than just showing you demos of how things work when it comes to technology. I think instead of just talking about the course, we can quickly go through the course outlines and see what it has. Just for information, watch to the end of this video because I have a free course voucher that as of today that this video is out on YouTube is valid for the next three days. And this is for the new course and it is available for free. Let's get into the course outlines. The course is not going to teach you Power Apps or Power Automate. All we are trying to do in this course, we are trying to connect these two environments. So naturally, we are using JSON. And the scope of this course, obviously, it's a bit of Power Apps, a bit of Power Automate, but it's all about integration and then how we can deploy and secure this integration. That's it? Well. No. Let's look into the course roadmap. We start by creating a flow that can be called from Power Apps. So it's very easy. This is probably something that you have done that before. And I've even covered that in my YouTube videos and also in the other course. So this is just for the people that they want to start with. The only difference is that here we use a Power Apps V2 trigger. But this is not the direction of the course. This course is the intermediate level course. So before we learn how to do it, we need to know why we need that. So we look into the scenarios in which we have to use Power Automate in Power Apps. Sometimes there is the way around it. Sometimes no Power Automate is the only way you can go around. So we are looking into what this integration can offer. And we are talking about integration options, visual design, workflow, and we're also looking to the security, scalability, maintainability, performance, accessibility, and all those things, problems that we can address using this kind of integration. And I will walk you through every single one of them. So it's not just a matter of, oh, using a flow is the only way that you can do this. No, no, no. It's not just a matter of the only way. Now we are offering you different ways of doing something, but we suggest in this situation, in this scenario, probably using the flow is the best approach. Then we get into understanding synchronous and asynchronous calls between Power Apps and Power Automate. Obviously, you can make a call from Power Apps and wait for the Power Automate to respond and get the response and process it. Or sometimes you just make a call to Power Automate Flow and then you continue with your own job. And in this section, we will learn how to make either one of these calls. And after we learned how we can make these calls, we should be able to send parameters to the flow and get the parameters back from the flow. That we will cover it in the next section. So exchanging simple and complex data types between Power Apps and Flow. And if you think that we are exchanging some text, numbers, and all those things, well, not really. I will walk you through just a requirement design like this to building the JSON object that can support this request. We package the entire thing in this JSON in Power Apps send it to Power Automate, add it to a database, and return the order number to the application. 
And after doing all those cool things, we want to see if there is a way that we can fire a flow without using the Power Apps trigger. It is very easy, to be honest. Power Apps making a direct call to the instant flow that has the Power Apps or Power Apps V2 trigger. We don't do that. We just make Power Apps to go somewhere in a data table, data source, dataverse, SharePoint, or anything else, make the update, and then we have another automatic flow that is monitoring this data source. So when we make changes here, indirectly it causes automatic flow. But as much as it sounds silly, it is extremely important because most of this section is about working with the scenarios that only this approach fits them, or basically working with the problems that this approach will not solve the problem. You really need to take this approach to solve the business problem or put the workflow together. Let me give you a clue when you're working with instant flows, if you're working typically with sequential workflows. So basically, first this happens, then this happens, then this happens, and eventually workflow ends and at some point. If you're old enough to remember state machine workflows, instant flow cannot implement that. And we go through a scenarios that this approach is going to make lots of the workflow design complexities just disappear. And of course, some other benefits that this approach will give us. Plus, this is not a sales talk. We also talk about the issues that we need to address when we are using this approach. Then this is my favorite chapter. We will learn how to work with the REST APIs or Web APIs from Power Apps using Power Automate. So basically, we are looking into a design like this. We have a REST API or Web API. Oh, by the way, you don't know what it is? No worries. In this section, we start by creating a very basic API that you created for yourself using Power Automate. And then we want to make a call to this. We test it from a standard app that can make that call. Then we want to call it from our Power Apps. Although the standard method of calling a REST API is using a custom connector, but because custom connector has nothing to do with the Power Apps Power Automate integration, I thought probably, okay, let's leave it aside for this course. So in this course, we want to have a Power Apps making a call to Flow, and that Flow needs to make a call to Web API. Why do we do that? Again, there are lots of scenarios that we really need to take this approach that we will discuss it in this section. But things don't end there. I thought, okay, while we are there, let's put one lecture that can cover the custom connector. And I will show you how you can make the call to the Web API using custom connector directly from Power Apps. And finally, the last section is going to be security and deployment. And for the security and deployment, I have a scenario like this. So we want to have Power Apps making a call to an instant flow. And that instant flow goes to SharePoint, making some updates there. Also, that flow is using a shared mailbox to send emails. Also, that instant flow gets some information from SQL Server. So we discuss all the security options that we need to handle this from Power Apps permissions to flow permissions required for such a scenario to SharePoint lists and library permissions and how to secure one list and stop Power Apps user to get to the site and change anything else or making direct changes to the content. And yes, we have a lecture that covers how to create a shared mailbox, how to secure it, and how to use it from either Power Apps or Power Automate. After you put all that together, you want to deploy it from one environment to environment. I have a lecture talking about environments and how environments work and how you can create your own environments. And also I will show you two different options for your deployment, whether deploy it as package or solution, depending on your deployment requirements. If you have already taken by Power Apps Crash Course, you have seen this packaging, but solution is something that we need that for the flows that we are firing them indirectly or Power Apps doesn't even call them and you're running it on schedule, yet you are part of our working project. Now, to get the course for free, just go to udemy.com, search for Microsoft Power Automate for Power Apps developers. It will give you the suggestion, just look it up, and here you have it. Depending on when you check it, there is always a promotion. Sometimes you log in and it tells you you don't qualify. It doesn't matter. Click on Apply Coupon and enter the code alireza-2022 and click on Apply. Coupon is applied. Course is free. 
add to cart and just get it. Couldn't be easier than that. And just one more reminder, this course is not going to teach you Power Apps or Power Automate. If you want to learn Power Apps, my course is there called Microsoft Power Apps Crash Course from UI to Integration. And for Power Automate, I suggest Microsoft Power Automate Crash Course. And if you really want to take it to the next level, then look into master Microsoft Power Automate expressions in two hours. This course shows you the internal side of Power Automate. And then after that, I would say you technically don't need any more training. You can just figure it out yourself. All right. If you watch this video a little bit later and you have missed the deadline for the free voucher shared in this course, don't worry about it. If you have already taken my Power Apps Crash course from UI to integration, just after you complete this course, if you share the course completion certificate on LinkedIn and tag me, I will send you a free voucher for this course by message on LinkedIn. We will see you in the next YouTube video. Now that I'm done with this course, I have more free time to produce more content for YouTube. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.